Hey guys, this is Dr. Matt Winning from winningstrength.com. And today I wanted to touch a little bit on fast eccentrics. Now, my good friend, Dr. Mike Isriatel, was gracious enough to use my video of me bench pressing, I want to say 225 or 315 with fast eccentrics, and then putting in um, some comments that that was not only dangerous, but unuseful for hypertrophy. And so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about why we do fast eccentrics occasionally. So to start the topic off, basically what we do is at winning strength, we never really train the exact same way all the time. So if we look at something like law of accommodation, which states if we do the same thing too often, we no longer create the desired training effect. This is also very true with movement speeds. So in an advanced lifter, again, in some respects, Mike Israel is absolutely right with the fact that fast eccentrics can be dangerous for people with poor technique. But in performance training, if we're not talking hypertrophy, force production is crucial in training. The force velocity curve, if we look at traditional hypertrophy training in general, is oftentimes forgotten, and it's especially with hypertrophy emphasis in mind, hardly ever utilized. Now, this can be a very bad thing if you start digging into some of the research, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, although slower eccentrics do aid in the development of some tissue, it has been known and shown that it can be just increasing type 1 fibers and has maybe not as big of an effect on type 2A and type 2X fibers, which is huge if you're trying to be extremely powerful, i.e. you give two shits about how much you bench press in a one rep max. So we have to be thinking about faster eccentrics for a handful of reasons. One, if we get out of the context of bodybuilding and we look at powerlifting, football, anything that requires sprinting or change of direction, most athletic events require more rapidly switching from eccentric, concentric, and isometric reactions. So we know that for a lot of football players, basketball players, etc., guys that are really good are ones that can change direction or contraction types very, very quickly, which we call ankle breakers, right? Um, example, sprinting. If we use oftentimes, it's a multiplication of body weight. So when we look at, I understand that bench pressing and maybe squatting are not exactly like running, but when you get really good, they become very, very similar in the amount of stress put on the body. A person that can run very, very quickly in a sprint can oftentimes put anywhere from three to three and a half times body weight into their body at bare minimum, if even if there's not a forced eccentric portion or something like a depth jump. Um, but it also means that we need to be able to change these contraction types in a split second, which also transfers over to being very, very strong, okay? So a a, and another reason that I think that's very important is a fast eccentric is a great way to assess form. So a lot of times if I bring in an athlete and maybe I don't have, maybe I'm in a, a conference, for example, and we only have 135 pounds, we don't have six or seven plates. We put a guy on a bench press and I make him do dynamic work. If I make him move as fast as he possibly can, his technical ability is going to be tested under basically fight or flight scenario, meaning if his technique is perfect under high speeds, chances are his technique is probably perfect under maximal weights. So what I find is interesting is that when your guys are doing eccentrics quickly, a lot of times it's an assessment tool if you know what to look for. Because many times when I see somebody mess up a technical aspect of their bench press, they can do it either heavy or they can do it fast. But either way, you're going to see a technical breakdown. The next thing that I want to talk about with lowering weights in a faster rate is stretch reflex enhancement. Now, for bodybuilding purposes, a lot of times we may want to ignore the stretch reflex because, oh, this guy's bouncing weight or this guy's not controlling it on the eccentric, which we've all been taught, even I was taught in school, that that was more conducive for hypertrophy. But what we start to realize is there's a whole nother grommet of things going on in the muscle tissue, and one of those major things is stretch reflex. Stretch reflex allows muscles to produce more force when they are stretched quickly. So lowering things in a slow eccentric is not going to have near the effect on your stretch reflex organisms or your Golgi tendons. So let's look at Julius Maddox, for example. Um, I don't have all the fancy, you know, uh, technical gear to kind of start snapping in videos for you guys. But if you watch Julius Maddox, anytime he benches over 700 pounds, 
whether it be 705 or close to 800, he has just enough control on the eccentric to not waste any energy. He basically drops the weight down to his body and presses it up. This is what I feel has given him nearly a 50 pound increase in the all time world record. And a lot of it is because he's not wasting any energy going down. He's just staying just tight enough in order to maintain his technique. And as we can see, just enough eccentric pressure to maintain the form um, is actually a good thing because it saves the energy for the concentric side, concentric side, and it also um, makes sure that he's got enough energy to push those maximal weights up on the concentric portion of the lift. So what we also start to do is when we dig into a little bit of research, we got some papers by, um, and I have to look on my, my stuff, like Horbati and Koch in 1990, some studies have shown greater hypertrophy with type 2A and type 2X fibers. So we can't neglect the fact that we're going to need faster eccentrics in our training, at least at some point. What's very difficult about YouTube videos, especially ones where we're only attacking one small area, is that we can make anything look bad if it's not put into context. So I do do stuff that is slow eccentrics, probably 50 to 60% of the year. And the other 50, 60% of the year, I do stuff with faster eccentrics. What I have found is that a mixture of all different types of contractile properties is usually the ideal way to go once you have a solid technical base. So I find that even if your, your, is, your goal is hypertrophy, for example, you may be missing out on some hypertrophy in those type 2A and type 2X fibers. So one of the other big things that I want you guys to understand is that when you train with submaximal weights, i.e. the dynamic method, and you move with fast eccentrics, you're actually increasing the load. So example, if a 300 pound bench, if you're lowering it very quickly, we can create that weight in excess of over 400 pounds by the time it touches our chest due to acceleration. So I find that training submaximal weights is oftentimes needed because we all know that we can't train at a maximum capacity on a consistent basis. How do we use submaximal loads and get maximal benefit? Well, fast eccentrics is one way that we can do that. So if we know that we can increase our bench press with 300 and make it 400 with 150% increase in how much total tension is going on the body, then it makes sense to use it on an occasion. But again, Mike Israel is absolutely right. If you have poor technique and you're just dumping the bar, then you could have higher incidences of injury. But don't neglect the fact that fast eccentrics may have some component in your training and probably need to be utilized once your technique has hit at least an intermediate to an advanced stage. So I hope this helps you guys out a ton. Go visit winningstrength.com. Hopefully you guys grab some of the manuals or maybe even come on to online coaching. We'd love to help you guys out. Talk to you soon.